everybody and welcome to the first episode of the Coyote Calling Academy YouTube channel. Um, we're going to use this for stuff like this. Today we're going to do a gear dump. We're going to go through all the gear that I use. It's just following off of the last episode of the podcast. But we'll go through in future episodes we'll go down and break down all the gear a little more. New gear I'm trying. Just go through stuff like that. We'll do some call demos of different calls. Things like that is what we're gonna use the YouTube channel for. So with that to start off, we'll start off with the guns. Obviously you're gonna need something to kill the coyotes when you call them in. So for the last two years, I've been running this 243. It's a Remington 700 SPS 243. Um, shooting 87 grain burger VLDs out of it. I am this year gonna start playing or this summer I'm gonna start playing with some of the Dogtown ammunition from Midway USA just to play with it I really like the burgers they've shot great so I don't know if I'm actually gonna end up switching for next year or but these are gonna they're, they're a lot cheaper so they'll at least be good for shooting prairie dogs and stuff like that in the summertime but so this rifle I, I kind of did my own rebuild of it to a point not Nothing really is fancy as far as the barrel, the action, or anything like that. I changed the stock to a Bell and Carlson stock. Changed out the trigger, the trigger, to a Timney trigger, and that that's pretty much it as far as my build on it. Um, I'm running the Athlon Aries two and a half by fifteen by fifty scope. It's got illuminated reticle. It does have turrets, and I don't I don't dial the turrets at all. I just mostly if I'm shooting range. not a long range shooter by any means in the first place but if if I'm shooting for my long range I can use the reticle for it I don't have to dial because I'm not shooting anything over 500 yards for the most part every now and then I'll try and wing it and hope I get lucky but that's about it is is luck but I really like the scope I like a low power real low power scope both of them are lower powered this two and a half to 15, I really like it. It stays low enough that I can pick up my target real quick, but I still have magnification if I am gonna shoot a little bit longer range. I usually leave my optics, my scopes sit on normally about five power is where, where they're staying for the most part. That's where I do most of my shots are taken on about five power. Uh, over here on this one, this is 223. It's a Mossberg MVP. On this, I have the Talos 4x14x44 scope on it. And like I said, it usually stays around 5 power, 6 power, somewhere in there. Super, super great gun. Shoots great for the, for the money of it. It's small, lightweight, real easy to carry. My daughter is kind of taking over this one, so I don't get to shoot it as much. That's kind of why I ended up switching to the 243 last year is because she was going to take that over but also because out here i'm in eastern colorado it's real open wide open country and we in the, in the winter time we get a lot of windy days so i wanted something that i had a little bit more range with and something that bucked the wind a lot better so that's and that's partly why i'm shooting these 87 grain bullets something a little bigger than the 58 grain for the 245s for the 223 just bucks the wind a lot better um, and both guns I shoot choice ammunition for the 223 I'm shooting their uh, 55 grain Nosler Varmageddon's from choice ammunition and like I said the 243 is 87 grain burger VLDs for the most part they're fur friendly but just like with any caliber any any caliber, anything like that, if you hit a bone, 90% of the time it's gonna be messy. So as far as fur friendly goes, I'm not gonna get into that. Everybody's got their cartridge, their bullet that they like. I'm just talking about what I use, what I like. And in my opinion, it's hard to beat the 243 as a coyote gun. It's great, bucks the wind, you got plenty of range out of it. And like I said, for the most part, it's pretty fur friendly with the right bullet. Unless you hit bone, then it doesn't matter what caliber you're shooting, to a point. For my shotguns, I run Winchester Harman X, uh, double BB, three inch shells. They're, they, they're about the 
cheapest that I've found and I, I really like them. They pattern great out of both of my guns so I'm able to shoot the same, the same shell out of both shotguns. And both shotguns I run the same choke tube out of. It's a Pattern Master Anaconda Long Range. It's a .700 constriction. They both run, they're, they're both the Beretta Benelli mobile system so I can run the same choke and everything. So that's real nice. I have them set up to where they both are shooting pretty much the same point of impact. For my semi-auto that I shoot, it's a Beretta A300 Outlander. It, it shoots, shoots good. I've had some issues with it right now. I'm waiting on a part for my recoil spring, but other than that, it was a common problem, I guess, from what I understand on that. But I really like it. It shoots great, cycles fast. Um, for my pump shotgun that I run, this is the one I've run the longest. It's the first one I had for Coyotes. It's a Beret, uh, Benelli Nova. And I'm shooting the same Winchester shells out of it. Same choke. On both of my shotguns, I just switched this back and forth. It's just a... Uh, it's made by Beam Shot, just a little Picatinny rail that clamps to the barrel, and then this quick detach bipod mounts on it. And the reason, I just switched this back and forth to whichever shotgun I'm using. The reason I have this is it just keeps, you know, when it's sitting here, it keeps the barrel up out of the snow, the mud, everything like that. It's, it's out of the ground. It makes it a little easier to grab a hold of. Um, so that's, that's that on my shotguns. My calls I'm running for my e-caller, the Lucky Duck Revolt. Like I said, I was running a Fox Pro Fury 2 before this one. And I've, I've been really pleased with the Lucky Duck. It, I haven't had any issues with it at all. The batteries last pretty decent in it. I just got the Ambush 360 battery pack. I haven't used it since I got it yet, but I'm super excited to give that a try. The battery should last a lot longer than just the store-bought double A's. But even with store-bought double A's, I'd only have to change batteries, I don't know, maybe three times a season, maybe four. And But I don't run strictly my e-collar. It's not, it doesn't run constant. So I get a little bit of, a little bit more life out of my batteries than guys that are just gonna run the e-collar solely. Where I'm running the hand calls, it saves some battery. And I don't run the decoy, which helps save the battery. I do run the, the motor to rotate it back and forth and point it kind of direction to direction every now and then. Um, my decoy, like I said, I don't run the decoy. It's in there and I have it glued in because I kept losing the decoy. But I don't, I all, it, it's always up, but I don't ever turn it on. So I feel like when I've had it running with this decoy or with the Fox Pro decoy I had on my other call, I, I felt like I had more coyotes, just as many coyotes run off with the decoy running as I did that actually came in and committed. And I feel like with just the decoy sitting up there and the, the, the wind moving it back and forth and kind of everything else instead of going real crazy, I feel like that's that's enough. So that's kind of how I just leave it. it. Sits just like this when I'm on stand. For hand calls, I'm running all Coyote Creek hand calls and diaphragms. I think, in my opinion, they are they're the best out there. They're hard to beat. They're easy to blow. They, they sound great. And, and Travis is a great guy, so he always he takes care of everybody. So that's what I run. For my chest pack, is where I carry all my my hand calls. This I don't go anywhere onto any stand without this. It has basically everything to where if I park the truck, all I got to do is grab my gun my tripod, my vinyl harness, and I'm good to go. I got everything bare minimum that I'm gonna need. So on here, I made this little lanyard out of paracord to hold the calls. When I'm wearing it, it, it keeps them up. They don't clank around like a regular lanyard would. Um, inside of here, the main harness, we got binoculars. My binos are the only thing that I have not switched to Athlon Optics yet which is gonna happen real soon, but right now I'm just running Vortex. Uh, I don't even remember the model, but they're Vortex binoculars. 
The remote for my e-collar sits right here. It's got a little lanyard clip to the final pack so I can't lose it. In here I got my wind indicator. This is the Cirrus wind indicator. It runs off a little vapor cartridge. Uh, you just push the button and the little vapor stuff comes out. It's great, no mess. The battery on it lasts forever. This one actually, if you wanted, you can plug your cell phone into it and charge your cell phone if you need. I carry extra hand calls in here. In this pouch, I got some extra rifle shells. This side, I carry some extra shotgun shells. Down in this bottom is where I keep my diaphragms. And then I have this little lanyard here that I can clip my diaphragms that are wet onto until they dry out. I have my rangefinder right here. And my rangefinder, when I'm on stand using my rangefinder, like I said in the podcast, I don't use it. I'm not ranging coyotes when they come in at all. When I sit down, I'm ranging a bush here, a bush over here, a hillside here. Just so I know once that coyote comes in, I know where he's at for just a quick reference. If he if he's on this hillside, he's 300 yards. If he gets to this bush, he's about 200 yards and so forth. Just to give me a quick reference on where they're at because there's a lot of areas out here where it's wide open and it can be kind of deceiving where you think it's four or 500 yards and it's only 200 yards. The, the terrain can be real deceiving to you out here. So that's why I do that. For a thing that's really nice to have, and there's all kinds of different models of them, a bunch of different people make them. This is a drag. It's a hands-free drag. It just loops across you like so. You can tie your coyotes to the ends, and then you can just take off dragging. This is one that I made out of paracord here. It's the first hands-free drag that I've had. I made that one. This is just one I got from Easy Tote, and you just put a leg and a mouth or two legs through the end, and then you just drag it, you can carry it in your hand, you just hold on to it. Then I just got this one. This is from Randy Webb with the pocket drag. It's a hands-free drag that he come out with. And it's basically same theory as the one that I made. It goes across your body. You can hook, the, hook a, a leg or a jaw through here, drag them out. And it's pretty simple. Keep your hands free as you're dragging. Drag is definitely a must have. It makes it nice rather than trying to grab a, a leg and come out where your forearm and your hand starts getting tired. Uh, so. Next, we'll go over my my seats, my packs. Um, this is the Slide Dog ground and pound chair that you heard me talk about in the podcast. It, it adjusts to pretty much anything you want here. It's got a nice padded seat, solid back. In the back, it's got this bag. The e-collar on the tripod fits down inside. My rifle tripod fits down inside and I can carry everything I need just like that. It folds up real nice to walk in with and you just wear it like a backpack to get in the stand. Super comfortable. It, it's light. fits everything that you need to get in the stand and be comfortable. Works great. Next, for seats as far as that goes, um, if I'm hunting in an area where the grass is real tall in the spring or summertime, real tall grass or where there's uh, some juniper bushes, seed or something like that, I'll sit on the dove stool and I also use, have, lately I've been using this at night. Sit on the dove stool, super comfort, comfortable. They're pretty cheap, you can find them anywhere. I got this one at Walmart. Um, but super handy to have, it gets you a little more elevation where there's taller grass, thicker, tall, thick grass, or if you can sit up in front of a tree or a bush, it just helps you get a little more elevation to see a little better.
Now, as I mentioned in the podcast, if I'm walking a long ways, walking a long ways from the truck or gonna walk from stand to stand to stand, I run a pack. This is the Everly stock pack that I'm running. It's the A2 X3, I believe. It has a single rifle scattered in it. So I can run, carry just the rifle or just the shotgun in the scabbard. Fits the e-call down in here. It's got plenty of pockets for any extra stuff that you need. Super comfortable. It's nice to carry. It's got a, a little bit of a frame piece in here. So it, it stays tight. It doesn't move on you when you're walking or anything like that. Super comfortable. And it's real great for a long walk or days where you're just gonna walk from stand to stand to stand and not go back to the truck, super handy. If I'm gonna carry the rifle and the shotgun and I'm walking from stand to stand or have a long walk, I run the, this is the D-Mod pack from uh, Steve Kreiner. It's very nice, super handy, but real comfortable. It's got down in here, there's a padded divider so your rifle and your shotgun aren't banging together in your in your uh, pack as you're walking in. This little backpack on the front is detachable. There's just two clips on each side. The bag comes off and then you have just the scabbard. Or you can leave the pack on it, carry your e-collar, extra bullets, whatever you need in the pack. It's very nice to have. Allows you, the packs allow you to walk carry everything you need in, walk in hands-free, then you got more hands to drag out all the coyotes with. Um, when I'm hand calling, I always wear a glove, at least on my hand call hand. I just, it, it covers the movement of when I'm hand calling. And like I said, they're, they're just cheap uh, wool or cotton knit gloves. So with that, that pretty much covers everything that I'm running. I don't think I missed anything. If anybody has any more questions on anything that I use or anything like that, kind of the, the YouTube channel will help you see what I'm talking about in the podcast. I know just on the podcast episodes, you're hearing me say names of different stuff and all that. And if you haven't seen it before, you don't really know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use the YouTube channel to help allow you guys to see exactly everything that I'm running <coughs> and all that. And then we're going to do some call demos, kind of run through that, all the calls that I use, how, how I use them and how they sound. That'll be in future episodes on the channel. If anybody has any questions, don't be afraid to shoot me a message. I'll try and answer the best that I can. Um, I appreciate all the feedback from everybody. 